Hey guys, it's Ike. Welcome to part 13 of Heart of the Woods. A uh, little bit of a recap. We saw the forest spirit. He was very sad and very hurt. Abigail was also feeling very hurt because the forest is freaking got burned or it's still burning. And Abigail, uh, sorry, Maddie, finally decides to take the offer of becoming the queen in order to find him a queen. <laughs> <laughs> and now here we are in this cabin, uh, and, and, and also Maddie has magical powers now, and she turned Abigail back into, uh, or she took Abigail and placed her into the physical plane, so now she's kind of like human, she's kind of human, I suppose. So yeah, well, here we are, she's about to contact Tara, let's see what happens after this. There are so many different pictures and words, don't you ever lose track of where you are? Not really, you just get used to it. Surely you're being modest. I imagine very few people could operate one of these. I love her. What? <laughs> I wish, but really, most people have one of their own. Or even more than one. Uh, they're a really common part of everyday life. I see. In that case, you'll have to teach me. Definitely. For now, though, I'm gonna send that message. How will it be transported? It's, um... I try to think of how to explain this, then I realize I have the perfect analogy. What the force? You know how the force is all totally connected, and like how you can sense all the different parts of it? Abigail nods, and slowly her face gets pale. Madison, don't tell me that modern people are connected the same way. <laughs> I can't help it, I burst out laughing. Indignantly, she waits for me to finish. It takes me past the point of having tears in my eyes before I do. <laughs> I can see that I was wrong. She pretends to pout, though I can see her in her eyes that she's just playing. I'm sorry. It's just that you look so horrified. She laughs too. Well, imagine how I feel. Apparently nothing is impossible anymore, so I simply have to assume the worst. She snuggles against me, pressing her cheek against my shoulder to show that she's only pretending to be upset. So, so go on. Do explain it then. It's not the people who are connected, but the machines. If you have a computer, you can send a message instantly to any other computer in the world. I don't know about sending a message to any other computer, but you know. <laughs> to, a, to the computer directly, I don't know. It's more complicated than that, but that's the easy way to put it. I see, so you're going to send a message to Tara's computer? Right, I'm gonna tell her to come and meet us here. I hope she'll believe me. Well, just tell her, just write something that she'll know it's you. I'm sure she'll know, somehow. I nod, entering Tara's email into the field. It feels absurdly formal to send an email of all things to get in touch with her. I don't think we've ever had an email conversation in our lives. I leave the subject line blank. Can you do that? Anything I could put there would feel comical. I really don't know how to word the rest of this message, so I don't think about it. I just put my finger to the keys and start to type. Dear Tara, I know this is gonna sound kind of hard to believe. Oh, is this where- wait. The music faded out, but I, th I thought it was gonna black out. Oh. <laughs> it was gonna do a whiteout, but it needed me to actually press it again. Are we gonna switch perspective? No. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with that every time, again, every time we switch to <laughs> Abby, uh, to, to Morgan and Tara, <laughs> I always feel like they've just been lounging for the past two weeks. <laughs> I'm acquainting Abby with modern technology when the sound of loud voices from outside interrupts me mid-sentence. Well, one very obnoxiously loud voice. I only know one person that can make a racket like that. I grab Abigail's hand and lead her out into the living room just in time to hear Tara and Morgan reach the door. Oh, Tara, stop for a second. We don't know for sure this isn't a trap. Yeah, but what if it's not? I can't take that chance. I'm going in. Tara, wait. The, the door flies open so hard it bangs against the wall. Tara freezes in the doorway, probably not expecting me to be right here. Or maybe even here at all. Uh, hey. How's everything? <laughs> everything I had rehearsed and planned to say in my head is forgotten in an instant, of course. 
Somehow, it feels more unreal than anything else so far. I never had time to doubt any of the stuff that's happened to me. I had plenty of time to doubt that I'd see Tara again. Tara's mouth flaps up and down like a nutcracker statue. I don't think she forms a single coherent word. Morgan approaches from behind and places a protective hand on Tara's shoulder, which seems to reset her. She rubs her eyes as she stares at me. Either she doesn't believe what she's seeing or she's about to cry. Maybe both. You, you change your look a little bit, huh? <laughs> when she finally speaks, her voice shakes like crazy. You like it? Tara gives me a slight nod. It, it makes you look like a total nerd. <laughs> Without another word, she bursts into tears. She doesn't even hesitate a moment before bounding forward like an exi like an excited tear strain, tear stained racing dog. What? <laughs> a tear stained racing dog. I've spent so long worrying about her that seeing her safe and sound in the flesh is almost too much to handle. There's so many things that we left unsaid or unresolved. I'm just glad that there's time to fix that now. I, I thought you were dead. Me too. <laughs> we both burst into laughter, still punctuated with sobs. But at least we both have the clarity of mind to tell that this hug has gone on for way too long. When we split apart, she has a big, dumb grin on her big, dumb face. Welcome back, Mads. Good to be back, Tara. Our reunion over, Morgan finally stepped forwards, taking, Mo taking Tara's hand in her own. She smiles at me, her expression soft for once. Hey, Maddie, it's good to see you again. Her voice is as calm as ever, but the wide, genuine smile on her face tells me that these last couple weeks have, her ch have changed her as much as they changed me. You too, Morgan. I feel like I should say something more than that, but I know neither of us is in as much for words. It's nice to have someone else around who feels the same way for once. Before anything else, there's someone I'd like to introduce you to. I turn the gesture to Abigail, but at first she's nowhere to be seen. Then I spot a familiar flash of pink and purple lingering by my bedroom door. Right, we spent so long together that I had forgotten how timid she was when we first met. Her eyes are wide as she wrings her hands, looking from me to Tara and back. Tara and Morgan looks as shocked once they noticed her. I head over to where Abigail is and take her hand. They're okay, I promise. She nods, letting herself be led back to the into the living room. Tara, Morgan, likes you to meet Abigail. I pause for a moment. She's my girlfriend. <laughs> you, you got like, man, the sense of urgency for these girls. <laughs> Although like, uh, it's very understandable to just have like a normal moment to just have a breather, you know? You're in this dire situation. <clears throat> Why stay stressed all the time? <laughs> Whoa, we have a whole lot to catch up on. She turns to face Abigail. I'm Tara. I've been friends with Maddie for forever. It's nice to finally meet you, Tara. I've heard a lot about you. Hell yeah, all good things, I hope. Um, mostly. <laughs> I'll take it. Morgan stepped forward, too. Morgan, Morgan, nice to meet you. Abigail nods politely. You as well? So, uh, let's sit down. We've got a lot of catching up to do, and not a whole lot of time to do it. The four of us move to the couch and sit down. Right as we do, there's a loud grumble from beside me. Abigail clutches her stomach, looking absolutely mortified. What was that? What's happening? Oh yeah, we should probably eat something. Eat? Her eyes light up. That's right, I'm hungry. Morgan and Tara looks baffled. I can't blame them for that one. Like I said, long story. Is there anything to eat? It's been a long time since either of us have had a meal. I'll make us some breakfast. Cross your finger for pancake mix. Alright, so like the whole gang's all together. <laughs> anyway, I think that's everything. Minus the really juicy stuff anyway. I'm okay with not hearing about that, thanks. <laughs> Abigail, now finally finished with her meal, wraps her arm around mine and, and rests her head against me. 
Morgan sighs and send Tara and me a meaningful look. She rises and clear her throat. Abigail, would you mind coming with me for a minute? Morgan's voice carries a more serious tone that feels like a sudden departure from our light-hearted reminiscing. I knew it couldn't last forever, but I hope we can return to it soon. Is something wrong? No, not at all, but something we need to talk about. And besides... She looks at Tara, then over to me. Her tone might be serious, but her soft expression makes it clear that she's not about to deliver any bad news. These two might need a bit of privacy. I nod at her as Abigail lets go of my arm. With a quick kiss on my cheek, she stands and walks to Morgan's side. The two of them head towards the bedrooms, leaving Tara and I to stare at each other in silence. <laughs> we look away from each other awkwardly as I try to think of what to say. Should I speak first? Should I wait for her? What do I say? She knows how much I missed her, and there was so much tension before, uh, between us before I died. I never had the chance to apologize for hiding Abigail, or for how I handled telling her I was going to quit. I take a deep breath and raise my head. I just need to go for it. I've spent enough time waiting to speak. Whatever happens, happens. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have... It was really shitty of me to... I just... We both slam our mouth shut again. Tara's face reddens, and she chuckles softly. Maybe we should take turns. As long as you don't mind going first. She takes a long, overly dramatic breath and closes her eyes. I know that I was shitty to you about leaving. I should have listened to you and accepted instead of being all bitter and passive-aggressive. And I know I was even shittier once we got evidence. I shouldn't have frozen you out like that. Maybe a bad choice. <laughs> Maybe a bad choice of word there, Tara. <laughs> I mean, uh, I shouldn't have ignored you the way I did. I want you to be a part of Tara, Tara Normal. I really do. Trying to exclude you was stupid and impulsive. She looks at me, rind the eyes, and I can tell that all her typical bravado is gone. This is pure, naked honesty. It's hard enough for me to manage something like that, much less her. She's really put her heart into this, and I'm more than grateful for that. When all of this is over, whatever you decide to do, I won't stand in your way. You know that I always want you to be a part of Tara Normal, but you gotta be your own person. And... You're my best friend. Thinking I might have lost you forever made me realize that I honestly have no idea what I'd do without you. I give you a lot of shit, but I really do love you, and I'm so sorry all of this happened because I was too much of a screw-up to remember that. Tara exhales and slums back in her chair, as if the act of apologizing drained all the energy in her body. She's grown so much in the short time we've been here. Then again, so have I. I need to make sure that I show her the same sincerity in return. I'm sorry too, Tara. Even if I was mad, I shouldn't have hidden Abigail from you. It made things worse for the both of us, and it drove us apart when we should have been getting closer than ever. But more than that, I shouldn't have set this whole thing into motion the way I did. The memory of our fight back home is painful, but I can't keep trying to run away instead of dealing with it head on. It's not fair to either of us. I should have told you that I was thinking about leaving and why I was thinking it. I should have talked over with you instead of dropping the bomb right on you before we left. When I thought I was going to be stuck here forever, I realized you were the person I'd miss more than anyone else, even more than my family. I don't know what I'm going to do when we get back. I still don't, I still have a lot to figure out, but I do know that whatever happens, we'll always be best friends. Mads, I... As she struggles to think what to say next, I gently put my arms around her in a reassuring hug. We've said enough for now. She hugs back, squeezing a bit too hard. We stay that way until it starts to get awkward, as hugs tend... <laughs> as hugs between us tend to do. <laughs> I pull away and sit back, a bit embarrassed. So, are we good? I let out a deep breath, releasing the anxiety that I've been twisting my stomach in knots. Whatever happens next, I know it'll be easier with that, without that dragging me down. Yeah, yeah, I think we're good. 
Are we good enough to start calling you the ghost with the most? Are we good enough to- the ghost with the- Don't push it. Oh, going to Morgan. <laughs> While we split up those girls, in this room, we get the girlfriends talking to, to each other. I Oh my god, both of them have soft voices and like... <laughs> I end up bringing Abigail into Tara's room. The two of us carefully step over the pile of clothes on the floor that sits on the bed. She bounces on it a few times. I don't think she's used to springs. Tara's room... I mean, I, 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 mean, I guess she left, but she just left the pile of clothes. <laughs> Having fun? How do you people sleep like this? Aren't you afraid of just bouncing out of bed? It's not that bouncy, it's just comfortable. I suppose tomorrow I can let you know if I agree. So what is it that you wanted to talk about? It's... It's hard to put into words. No matter what I had been preparing myself for, a conversation like this wasn't part of it. It's about family. Our family. Hour. You're a dousing as well? I'm a fisher. I'm a... Family? I mean, I guess that's kind of... Family. But Abigail... No, no. No. So is it, so is it like her family that gets sacrificed? In Abigail? Because I know that Abigail, you know, volunteered for tribute. And, and in order to save her sister's life. So. Hmm. Okay. You're a dowsing as well? I'm a fisher, actually. But a change in last name doesn't change the fact that we're a part of the same family. At first, I couldn't believe it. When Maddie and Abigail were telling their story, I thought that there must have been some sort of misunderstanding or that I'd heard wrong. But the, te the details all matched up, not just with what Evelyn's told me over the years she tried to break my spirit, but with the notes and journals left behind by those before me. So she hasn't changed. After all these years, it's still us. Yeah, I'm supposed to go next. There isn't anyone else. No siblings or aunts or uncle. Just me and her. So... So, so she's just been like, taking the same family? <laughs> And, like, Morgan's, like, the last one, so you're just gonna hop to a new family, Evelyn? She makes a sound of sympathy and moves closer to me on the bed, touching my shoulder gently. I tense up, almost shaking hard enough to shrug her off, but she, she, she remains. I don't want to be that person anymore, the one afraid to let anyone close, physically or emotionally. I'm sorry. I just nod. I can tell that she doesn't know what to say either, and that's fine. Do you mind if I ask you something? Sure. Why didn't you leave? Back in my time, it wasn't even a possibility. There was no way I could escape. We wouldn't have gone very far if we tried. But now, Madison told me about all sorts of fantastic machines and devices. Surely you could have gone. I shrug. Of course I considered it. Dreamed about it, even. But there's no way she could know that. And besides... I thought about running away many times. I thought a lot of different ways to make sure she couldn't hurt me anymore. But the same thing stopped me every time. She wouldn't just give up because I'm not around. She'd find someone else, like she always has. Then they died instead. I braced for her to tell me that it's ridiculous and that I should have put myself first or to, or to burst into tears at the very notion. Instead, she laughs. It's not a happy laugh, though. I see. I understand. Truly. I chose to die for someone's sake as well. Someone I cared very deeply. She sighs wistfully, remembering days gone. I can't help but smile the same way that she laughed. <laughs> Since they're sisters, right? And, like, they're both dating the other two girls. <laughs> if these two girls get married... To, to, you know, our two main characters. It means that those two are, like, gonna be sister in law Man, the, the family relationship is just... The, the family is just growing. <laughs> I see. I'm just carrying on the family tradition, then. 
Let's make sure it ends with you. I nod. It will, one way or another. I'm glad, though, to know that our family turned out to have people as wonderful as you. <laughs> I'm not really anything that special. I disagree. Not just anyone could have done what you have. She leans forward, wrapping her arms around me in a gentle hug. This time, I don't hesitate. I hug her back. Family. It's never been a word that really meant much to me. All I've ever had was the monster in my home. Now, though, I've realized that that's no longer the case. We separate, and I gesture towards the door. She nods. Together, we leave the room and rejoin the rest of her family. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> oh, we just gotta go back to Maddie, alright? We just had to have a little nice little scene about family. <laughs> Abigail and Morgan comes out of Tara's room and join us, both smiling. I'll have to ask her what they talked about later tonight. But right now, I'm just enjoying the moment. I feel more at peace than any time since arriving in Eisenfeld. Even during the sweetest moments with Abigail, there was still the lingering bleakness of being a ghost. Now, despite the threat of Evelyn, it feels like there's a chance of everything turning out well. As we talk, oh, Mor Morgan's <laughs> Galadera. <laughs> Morgan's cat comes and hops onto my lap. I would have expected her to take Abigail, not me. I scratch behind her ears and she leans into the motion, purring contentedly. Tara notices and sits up straight. Wait a second, Mads. I just realized, but you haven't met Galadera yet, right? I have, back in the shop, right after we arrive, remember? No, I mean like, met her. Morgan was right. She really can talk. She can? I don't know what I... No. I can. The cat looks up from my lap, staring into my eyes. Her tail swishes lazily, if I feel like it. Both Abigail and I stare in shock at the talking cat. <laughs> you guys were ghosts, alright? Then why didn't you sooner? It's the first question that comes to mind. Galadera closes her eyes. After a moment, I start to think that she's falling asleep, but she opens them once more. I didn't feel like it. I look over at Morgan, sitting across from me. I guess I owe you an apology. It's fine. She certainly didn't make it easy to believe. Galadera stands up, her tail lashing as she strides over to drape herself across Abigail. In response, Abigail strokes Galadera's fur, looking almost as gleeful as when we had our first meal. I didn't know if I could trust you. Now I know. I leave the two of them to their cooing and cuddling and walk over to the front window, peering outside. How many times have I stared at the star these past few nights? Abigail taught me a few constellation, but tonight? It looks like an entirely different sky. I rest my head against the window pane, soaking in the starlight and calm. Moon sick. Hey, by the way, you said you only came into the village the one time, right? Yeah, we didn't want to risk it any more other than that, not with how close we came to Evelyn. Makes sense. You, uh, didn't see anything embarrassing when you were spying on us, right? <laughs> we weren't spying, or, or at least we weren't trying to. But no, thank God. Oh, whew. For real, though, after this is over, but before we leave... For real, though, after this is over, but before we leave... You've got to show us some of the cool spots in the forest. <laughs> there were two butts in there. For real though, after this forest, but before we leave... <clears throat> For real... <clears throat> I just lo I lost... I lost Tara's voice. <laughs> For real though, after this is over, but before we leave, you got to show us some of the cool spots in the forest. Sure, that'd be fun. Actually, do you want to go right now? Wait, for real? I can show you the fairy clearing at least. That's our favorite spot. How long a walk is it? It's getting kind of late. Oh, we wouldn't need to walk. Oh, then she's like showing off her teleportation skills. <laughs> Tara's face slowly morphs from puzzlement to excitement as she realizes what, I, what I'm suggesting. You mean like magic? I nod. Oh, hell yeah. Her enthusiasm startles Galadera, who hops up and runs away. Abigail gestures in vain for her to come back. 
You two up for a field trip? Abigail, still upset at losing her new friend, nods stiffly and says nothing. <laughs> sure. Galadera tripes back in, returning to Abigail's feet. Abigail perks up immediately. Would you like to come with us, Miss Galadera? I suppose so. Carry me. Abigail gladly obliges. I lead everyone outside and into the tree line, just in case anyone's watching. I gather everyone into a circle, and the four of us lock hand while Galadera perches on Abigail's neck. Okay, three, two, one. The forest greets me, and I respond in kind. It shows us the way to its heart, to the lake. I hold Abigail and Tara's hand tightly and breathe the softest sigh. I th thank the forest, and... I open my eyes, and we're here. It's just that rainbow thing again. It's where all the magic come from. Look at the moon. Moon's like... Slowly becoming a full moon. As soon as we arrive, I can feel the presence of the fairies in my mind. They're instantly aware of where we are, and I send them all a mental greeting, which is returned right away. Galadera slicks her ear back, and her tail begins to lash harder than before. I wonder if she can feel magic, too. Before I can ask, Tara whistles in awe. Dang, Mads, you really leveled up, huh? <laughs> I put all my skill points into magic. <laughs> Even Morgan looks dumbstruck, something I'm not used to from her. She tilts her head back, staring in open mouth wonder at the glimmering trees and fairy lights. What is this place? Are we really still in the forest? Yes, it is a very special grove. It's one of the first places I brought Madison. We came here, uh, we came back here many times. It definitely feels magical. Damn it, I should have brought my camera. We all head down to the pond. Tara and Morgan gawk at its unfrozen water, the same way I did when I first saw it. I feel a strange sense of pride seeing them so excited about this place. A loud buzzing suddenly fills the air. Before I can warn Tara and Morgan what's about to happen, fairies burst forth from the trees. Tara yelps in shock as they pass over her, wings beating noisily. Your Majesty, you're back! You've returned! Hello, you three. It's nice to be greeted so enthusiastically, even if I didn't want to be the queen. I wave, expecting the three of them to come to me right away. Oh no, it's Galadera! But to my surprise, the fairies sail right past me and flock around Abigail instead. Our queen! Galadera hisses as Abigail shrinks back, looking afraid. I'm, I'm not your queen, she's over there. Abigail tries to point to me, but the fairies ignore her. No, you're not. We know you aren't. It isn't you. One of them reaches for Galadera, and she swats at the fairies with one paw, just like Abigail did when we first encountered them. The fairies re react in with shock indignance, their mouth open in identical shapes of puzzlement. They abandon verbal communication and instead emanate a wave of questioning curiosity. Although I can feel it, it's not directed at me. By listening, or rather by feeling, I realize who they're communicating with. Galadura. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just to be sure I'm right, I communicate a request for, for confirmation. Despite her comfort, discomfort, Galadura turns to me from Abigail's arm, blinking languidly. Yes, that's right. Now I'm the one whose jaw drops in shock. Uh, care to fill us in, Mads? Um, cat, uh, Galadera, fairy queen. <laughs> Everyone is silent for a moment, even the fairies. Then Abigail clears her throat. Um, does that mean I should set you down then? No, this is fine. Wait a second. A little seed of hope blooms instantly within my heart. The fairies answer my question before I can think it. The seed of hope withers and dies in response. Maddie? I close my eyes tightly. I see Galadera in my mind's eye, and the rest of the world fades as I speak to her. Once again, the fabric of time tear and disappear. The fairies guides our voice. Galadera can't be the fairy queen. Not anymore. Af not after what the moon sick one did to her. Evelyn. The last piece of the puzzle fall into place. I see it clearly. Evelyn, the rogue fairy, burning under the moonlight. So... <laughs> 
yeah, so the fairy had ran away and the fairy queen came to chase after her in the in the vision that freaking Abigail, uh, Maddie saw. So she's the moon sick one. Eh. The fairy queen ritual gone wrong. Galadra running after Evelyn and then disappearing. Without realizing, I've reached out for Galadra, stroking her fur. The fairies and I communicate with the heart of the woods. <gasps> it's the title. To free her and restore her rightful place on the throne. The woods usher forth its strength. The fairies conglomerate around us and the buzzing increasing in frequency until it's a dull hum. I reach within myself. The waxing moon basks the scene and I gather its light into a pool of my hand. Reaching out, I feel the magic on Galadera begin to vibrate violently. It burns to the touch. Galadera yowls in pain and all at once the magic shatters and melts away. With a gasp, I'm back to the present. Abigail rushes to catch me, and the effect of time returns. Their interest in their obsolete queen waning, the fairy clump back together and get ready to depart. We'll see you again, when the moon is at its brightest, one way or another. With the cheerful reminder, they take off, fading out of sight. I separate their thoughts from my own and push them away. Madison, what happened? I take a deep breath and steady myself. Abigail scoops up the pain Galadera into her arm, petting and cooing. It's... it's a long story. I'll tell you later. Galadera, are you alright? Yes. It was foolish to think you, New Spring Queen, could dispel such a powerful curse on a waxing moon. Galadera turns away and grooms herself. I feel a rush of guilt. Tara touches my arm slightly. You okay, Mads? Yeah, ah, uh, yeah, I'm fine. She grins and pats my back. Trying to ease the mood, she stretches wide and lets out a huge nervous laugh. Good. Well, that wasn't like anything I expected. The fairies especially. <clears throat> what did you think they'd be like? I have no idea, but it definitely didn't involve your quack, your, your quack, your cat being a queen. I would have gotten you the nicer cat food if I'd known. Yo, Gelato! How come you've never told us you were a fairy queen? Gel Galadera doesn't deign to look at Tara. You never ask. <laughs> as soon as we arrive at the cabin, Abigail makes a mad dash towards the couch and flops down on it with a loud thud. I'm a little surprised by how quickly she covers the distance. Galadera leaps from her arm and trots over to the kitchen, immediately stucking her face in the food bowl. Oh, my feet. Are they sore? I can't imagine walking around again after for so long might be a bit draining. No, it's not that. It's these boots. Abigail kicks off her boots and send them flying, eliciting a yelp of surprise from Tara as one of the boots nearly hit her dead on. Your feet are bigger than mine. Do you have any idea what it feels like to get snow in your boot for the first time in 200 years? The three of us shudder in unison at the thought. Tara takes another step from the boot, as if she's afraid of infecting her with cold feet. <laughs> I can tell you right now that when we do go to America, I'm going to be spending the entire of the winter, winter month indoors. I can't help but grin at her word. Even if it hasn't, it wasn't entirely serious, that's the first time I've heard her speak about our future together with that much certainty. Okay, like... Uh, okay... How are you gonna get to America, Abigail? You don't have a fucking passport, and like, you think they're just gonna let some f foreigner come into the country? <laughs> Look, Abigail, I, I, I wanna say, gang citizenship in America. <laughs> it's not as easy as you, as, as, I don't know, you probably wouldn't even think about gang access to America, but it's not easy. I make my way to the couch and sit beside her, putting my arm around her without a second thought. She leans against me, our bodies align perfectly. PDA. When the summer month rolls around, I'm... Oh, that's Tara. When the summer months roll around, I'm definitely taking you ladies to the beach. Abigail instantly perks up at that, clasping her hand together and leaning towards Tara with a huge grin on her face. Yes, goodness, the, sa the sand, the sun, I'd love to see the ocean. Morgan seems a little less enthusiastic about the prospect of the beach, her face and expression more of concern than excitement. 
if we go to the beach, I'm just gonna end up looking like a lobster. Yeah, but you'd be a really hot lobster. <laughs> I try as hard as I can to suppress a groan, but Morgan and Abigail both chuckle. Abigail, I can understand, but the fact that Morgan genuinely finds this kind of endearing is baffling. <laughs> Thanks, babe. So, Abigail, what's the most interesting invention you've seen since you've came back? I suppose I haven't seen much of it, but the internet seems like a wonderful tool. I love the idea of being connected and sharing thoughts, feelings, and creativity with everyone around the world. Oh, Abigail, don't ever go on Twitter. <laughs> You'll regret it instantly. My girl. There isn't a single person more qualified to teach you about the internet than I am. We are gonna have a blast. There is no way I'm gonna let you be the one to show her around the web. You get into enough trouble on your own. But Madison, doesn't Tara perform on the internet? I assume that means she's very knowledgeable about its workings. Tara raises a bra an eyebrow and leans down to place her hand on the table, staring closely at Abigail. So Mads told you about Tara normal, huh? Oh no. She told me some things. I know you tell stories about supernatural occurrences and you make and you take them very seriously, even when they're quite obviously untrue. Did she now? Sweetie, maybe we shouldn't. And she also told me that people all over the world enjoy watching you. It sounds like you must be an incredible storyteller. Nice safe. Tara breaks into the ma into the massive grin she always puts on when she knows she found a new audience. You don't know the half of it, Abby. I've got a million of them. <laughs> I roll my eyes and lean back against the couch. Abigail just moves closer, ready to hear whatever Tara is going to say next. All right, Tara, you got a million subscriber, but how many views do you get within a month? All right, tell me your <laughs> tell me your CTR rate and tell me your freaking. <laughs> Tell me your audience retention time. <laughs> Give me the facts. Just looking at her feels healing. If listening to Tara's story makes her happy, then Tara can tell as many stories as she wants. Not that I'd ever tell Tara that, of course. One story turns to another. Morgan and I will chime with a correction every now and then, but we mostly let Tara work her magic. Abigail keeps asking questions, and Tara keeps eating them up. If Morgan's anything like me, she must enjoy seeing the girl she loves acting so happy. I know I am. I don't know what's going to happen after this. We're still in danger. We still don't have a way out. But that doesn't mean we can't enjoy our time together. All of us. I just wish I could shake the feeling that this is the last time we'll have this chance. Man, I feel like you've had this chance for like the past two weeks. Of, uh, I mean, the chance of, of you know, hanging out and like ch chilling out. <laughs> we stay like that for a while, telling stories, making jokes, and most importantly, talking about our future. Whether it happens or not, talking about it puts all puts puts all of us at ease. We talk about sharing technology with Abigail, getting her and Morgan new wardrobes where we're where we're going on dates when we get back. In those moments, it all feels real, like we're remembering moments that haven't happened yet. How is Morgan gonna get in? <laughs> Does she have a passport? <laughs> Like, uh, maybe Morgan can kind of come in, again, if she has identity-ish. Eventually, the sun begins to dip below the horizon. We have another huge meal to Abigail's delight. Afterwards, Tara tells her even more stories as Morgan and I clean up after them. I'm not sure if the four of us are going to stay in one apartment for long when we get back, but I think I'd really enjoy being around Tara and Morgan. Not as much as I enjoy being around Abigail, of course, but enough enjoyment to make me want to stick with them. In time, Abigail starts to yawn and blink warily as Tara talks. She hasn't had the chance to sleep since she got her body back, so she's no doubt unprepared for the strength of the body's need to rest. When the sun finally sets, we say our goodbyes and head to our room. I'm already looking forward to tomorrow. Ooh, switching. It's, it's, it, it's, it's stuck. <laughs> no, oh. Okay. <laughs> it's awkward. Wait.
<laughs> but we were already on Maddie. Why did you have to tell me that the perspective is Maddie? Okay. I shut the door behind us, leaving Tara and Morgan to their own devices. Feeling tired, sweetheart? It is still her first day in a human body. She's probably not used to needing to sleep yet again. But when I turn around to see her, Abigail looks anything but tired. No, Abigail, no. <laughs> not this again. <laughs> not exactly. I was thinking of going to bed, but perhaps not to sleep. Only if you wanted to, of course. I, I slide over to her, placing my hand on her hips. Glad to see that all the changes haven't put in a damper of your rampant flirtation. <laughs> With you, Madison? Never. Her, her arm wraps around me and I feel her tongue pushing inside my mouth, intertwining with mine. The aggression of her movement is surprising in the best way possible. As our lips part, I feel a hot breath on her face. Her eyes, half-lidded, stare into mine with unmistakable hunger. I've been dying to do this since we got back to the cabin. <laughs> I would have never guessed. <laughs> we don't even make it to the bed. Abigail, why? Why, Abigail? <laughs> uh, <coughs> uh. Well, time to go back into my little box. I'll, I'll, I'll click on this just in case. I mean, I'll leave it in, in, in this current scene just in case. But once they get naked, man, we're going in the box. <laughs> she spins me around, lowering me to the ground and dropping down on top of me. Pinning my hand to the floor, she kisses me again. Her lower body rubs against mine, enough to turn me on even more than I already was. Her hand starts pulling at my dress. After a second, she puffs out her cheeks, looking annoyed. I'm not sure how to take this off of you. <laughs> I laugh. Oh, allow me. Ah! 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 I didn't say this in the previous H scene, but I did put uh, a note to it. I'm not showing you guys the full thing, I'm just showing you guys the highlights. If you guys want to see it, go freaking buy the game. <laughs> I slide out of the dress. The moment I do, it reverts back into the form of my regular old jacket. Dude, look at those nipples though, like one of it is like way bigger than the other. We both stare at it for a second. So it was enchanted separately then. Just to test, I put on my jacket and it immediately regains the form of my fairy dress. That's certainly convenient. Quite. Now take it off again. <laughs> she, she commands me with a playful smile. As I stare at her and slide off my leggings, a thought suddenly occurs to me. Shouldn't we, you know, move to the bed? I don't want to wait that long. It's just, the bed's like... <laughs> guys are like a few feet away from the bed. I don't know, I don't know how big this room is. My heart pounds even faster. I had no idea she could be like this. What are you talking about after we saw what she did to you in the previous scene? <laughs> Madison, I hate to be selfish, but I forced myself to stop grinding for a moment, looking up at her expectantly. What is it? There's something I'd like you to do for me, if you don't mind. I had a thought in my mind, but I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> Anything. Abigail. I fucking... Wow, that's a really nice scene, I gotta say. Too bad you can't see it. <laughs> my own hand reaches my, reaches my crotch right as hers come to rest on my face. I don't waste any time, moving my tongue up in long, slow movements as wetness quickly coats my chin. That's pretty nice, actually. Her whole body shudders on top of me, and I reach with my free hand to grab her thigh and steady her as I continue licking. With, with my other, I trace tiny circles around my clit, matching her and w matching her with my own small tremors. Wow, this is. <laughs> In terms of uh, the writing for the H scene, I've, I, I, I really like. I really like these. De I really like these scenes. Every time, I'm treated to a sharp gasp and a low moan as she holds on above me. Each one serves to amplify the pleasure I feel as I run my finger down the length of my vulva. Vulva, Madison. I want more. 
please, I'm more than happy to oblige. I start to push my tongue inside her, bit by bit, bit, bit by bit, bit by bit, relishing her whines as I tease her. Eventually, I give her what she wants. I push my whole tongue inside her and she cries out, the bed creaking as she grips on it tight, on, 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 as, as her grip on it tightens. <laughs> Hey man, I don't want to ask, but like, how loud is Abigail right now? <laughs> All the things that I can just say, it's just, I really like the writing. I want to make her feel as good as I can, possi I, as I possibly can. All of my thoughts are consumed by that desire, that need to help her make up for so much lost time. For a moment, the both of us are completely still. For a moment, all the danger, all the hardship, everything around us melts away inconsequential, irrelevant. All of that exists is this shared feeling, her and me. I'd give anything to make it last forever. Unfortunately, one little thing gets in the way. I do need to breathe. <laughs> um, I pat her leg a few times, shaking her out of her afterglow for a moment. <laughs> Madison, is something wrong? Looking down, she realizes what my signal means. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> she quickly raises herself off of me. All right, let's, well, let's switch back to this. And hopefully there's no naked bodies, but I think there's going to be it. And we're going to go back to the box if I see it. <laughs> she quickly raises herself off me and I gulp in a few deep breaths. My body rattling as the cold air mixes with the warm tingling sensations. Ah, my eyes, my pure, innocent eyes. Are you okay? More than okay. I feel amazing. I give her a warm smile and the worry of her face melts away almost instant, almost instantly. She leans down and gives me a quick kiss before helping me to my feet. I reach out and grab the back of the bed to steady my shaking legs. I can't help but feel a little satisfied with myself when I see that she's doing the same thing. <laughs> Thank you, Madison. That was... Her face scrunches slightly as she struggles to think out the right word. It's adorable. That was incredible. Well, I mean, there's not much you can't do if you've got the proper motivation, right? I need, I really need to dial that back. I'm starting to sound like Tara. She still laughs, despite the cheesiness. It's a warm sound, instantly putting the awkwardness to rest. I'd kiss you for that if I wasn't about to collapse. I don't suppose you'd mind if we moved to the bed before you continue your flirting? All right, Abigail. Please. We both shakily climb into bed, throwing the cover over ourselves and snuggling up against each other. The fading warmth of afterglow revitalizes our shared body heat. How thin are the walls? <laughs> I have to say, I'm a little surprised to see that side of you. From what I can tell, it seemed like a good surprise. Oh! I turn away, embarrassed. Her, her soft lips brush my cheeks to coax me back towards her. I try to hold my ground, but a series of light pecks and nuzzles eventually overwhelm my defenses. Turning back to her, I let her bring our lips together again. The kiss feels slightly muted, our tongue and lips still a bit numb from the exertion, but the warmth behind it is unmistakable. I love you. I love you too, Madison. And not just because of what you did for me. Well, that's a relief. After a moment of silence, we both start to giggle in unison at our unified, terrible senses of humor. I put her to my chest and she nuzzles into me, letting out a contented sigh as I wrap my arms around her. Someday, we'll be able to do this anytime we want without having to worry about any of this craziness. I'd love that more than anything. We lie in silence. Oh, can I just... There you go. I'm back here again, even though... <laughs> we lie in silence, both contemplating that bright future, the growing storm outside, seeming more and more distant with each passing moment. Looking forward has been a source of anxiety for me for as long as I can remember, but lying here with her like this makes it comforting for the first time. Thinking about the future is actually making me happy. As long as that future is one with her, it's all I need. Morgan, alright? Please don't hit me with another scene, alright? <laughs> oh god. Just be a regular scene, and we'll be fine. I close the door to Tara's room and lean against it to steady myself. I'm still trying to process everything that's happened. 
I have family, real family, family that doesn't want to hurt me. And I'm not just talking about Abigail. When I was watching the three of them talk and laugh together, I felt, I felt like I was home. Like this is where I've always belonged. Oh, <laughs> hey, you okay? Tara's sitting in the bed in front of me, looking at me with curious eyes. Yeah, I'm okay. Sorry, just trying to wrap my head around all this. I get ya. There's a lot to unpack. You can take your time with it. She scratches the back of her neck, giving me a nervous smile. I guess that just means now isn't really a good time to talk, huh? What do you mean? I wanted to talk to you about something, or ask you about something, I don't know. It can just wait until you want to work out on getting your stuff sorted. <laughs> My nose is starting to get stuffy, and that's- Is something wrong? No, I mean, I don't think so. I'm just thinking about some stuff. Like, Tara takes a deep breath and scoots back on the bed. Her cur She curls her leg up towards herself, taking on a surprisingly subdued posture. It's, well... You know how Abby's been calling us a couple all day, even though we told her we're not? Yeah, she's not very good at taking hints. I'm not sure if that's it. I think she just, like, direct, kind of like you. Aw, <clears throat> uh, dude, that- Suddenly, I just have fucking mucus coming up. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's it. I think she's just, like, direct, kind of like you. Runs in the family, I guess. I know that we agree that we're gonna stay- friends or whatever you call this until this is all over. I get that. But after seeing the two of them, I'm not sure if I feel like that anymore. <laughs> voice, my voice is for tires gone. Where's my fuck? We've still got a lot of shit left to deal with. <clears throat> we still don't have a plan, but I think that's okay. She shrugs half-heartedly and looks down. I want to give her a hug, but I can't move. Abby put a name on this thing we have when we couldn't, and maybe she's wrong, but I don't want her to be. I really love you, Morgan. I don't want to deny that. I want to be closer than just friends that love each other, right? Don't. The word leaves my mouth before I have a chance to think about it. What? Please don't ask. I'm sorry, I, I, I thought... It's not that I don't want to. That's not why I'm asking you not to say it. It's because I know I'll say yes if you do. She looks up at me. I can practically hear the cogs turning in her head. Why don't you want to say yes? People get hurt when they chose when they get close to me. I don't even like having friends because of how guilty I feel when Evelyn gets in the way. I'm already so close to you. Closer than I've ever been to anyone. But if I put a label on it, a part of me just feels like it would just put you in more danger. I feel so stupid saying it out loud. It's just a word. Well, why am I so afraid of a word? Besides, I've never had a girlfriend before. I don't know what it could mean for me or for you. Why you had an ex? <laughs> well, I'm glad Tara's questioning it for me. What do you mean? What about the one that taught you how to knit? Oh no, how could I have forgotten about that lie? <laughs> It was just so easy to say back then. It made me seem like I knew what I was doing. Made it easier to ignore what happened with those girls. What girls? Tara's understood everything about me, but I still don't want her to tell her about what I did with them and why I did it. I, um... Hey, it's cool. I've had plenty of girls lie about having girlfriends before. It's just a thing people do sometimes. We can just forget about it. We're past lies now, right? Her words stab at me like needles. It's not like she's trying to force this out of me. I could even tell myself that this isn't a lie. That it's not just... T it's, that's not... That, that it's just not telling her about something she's never asked about. There's more to it than a simple lie. Wait, what am I saying? What am I doing? There's still things I haven't told you about me. What I, about what I've done, things that could make you change your mind. Tara manages a weak smile. It's hard to be reassuring when you don't know what you're reassuring someone about. If you don't want to date, that's okay. I get it. But nothing you can tell me, it's gonna change how I feel about you. She sit forward again and pats a soft spot in the bed next to her. But right now, I'd rather be miles away from her, not closer. 
I hate feeling like this. I finally learned how to get close to people, and now I'm back to pushing her away. Do you remember what I called myself the first time we talked to Galadra? A shell. But you know, that's bullshit, right? We're gonna make sure Evelyn can't get in your head anymore. Evelyn isn't the only one that made me feel that way. My throat feels dry. I need something to drink, but I know what will happen if I stop. If this closes, it won't open again. I didn't know how to knit from ex-girlfriend. I learned from Hannah. I had feelings for her. We were close, but she cut off all contact with me when I told her how I felt. Word travels fast in Eisenfeld. Within a week, everyone in the village knew I was gay. <coughs> That's when bad things started happening to Hannah. She slipped on a patch of ice and broke her leg. A few days later, her dog died. The next week, she came down with the worst flu any of us had ever seen. I knew it was Evelyn's doing, but who was going to believe me? As far as they were concerned, all this happened because she rejected me. I'm pretty sure some of the older in the village thought that I'm a witch. I clenched my fist, digging my nails as far into my palm as they'll go before my limbs freezes up, as far as they'll go until the icy hex within me takes over again. So you have like a spell on you that forces you to not hurt yourself? Nobody talked to me for a month. You told me that you spoke to some girls our age back when you were doing interviews, right? Did you ask them about me? We, uh, yeah, we did. What did they say? Nothing really bad or anything. One of them seemed closer to you than the other two, and her friend was teasing her about it. Just typical stuff. As if any of them have the right to mock each other, they're all the same. I probably slept with her. I wait for Tara to voice her dis disbelief, but she doesn't say anything. After Hannah got better, girls started coming by the store. They always had some sort of excuse. They'd start dropping hints, talk about how they've been curious about what it was to be a with a girl, how they didn't have anywhere to be that day. I still can't look at her. Any rational person would judge me for this. I know I've judged myself plenty. They always left right after. Most of them wouldn't talk about it. They'd just go back to their normal lives. I guess some of them talked though. Soon enough, I got a reputation. I knew I was being used. I resigned myself to being a shell, so I let them use that shell. I don't know when I started moving, but before I know it, I'm standing by the bed. Evelyn le never let me feel like this body belonged to me. She chose my clothes, she chose my style, she even chose what I'd do to my hair. It was her body, and she wanted it how she liked it. I can't keep standing. As much as I want to push away, I sit down next to Tara. Looking at her face, I can't tell what she's thinking. My mind runs through every worst case scenario as I make myself push onward. But things have been different with you. For the first time, sex started to mean something. Being open started to seem possible. Being myself started to seem possible. Alright, like, when did this happen? Like, after you were 18? Like, or, or is this, like, child prostitution happening? <laughs> how old when did this- How old were you when this happened? <laughs> how old is Morgan right now, actually? I can't remember. Did she ever say it? <sighs> but all I know about myself is how easy it is for other people to use me. If I go out into the world and live for myself, I don't know what kind of person I'm going to become. The shaking has started to subside, replaced by a painful knot in my gut. Almost there. I can make it. What if I end up becoming someone you can't love? What if my shell is the only worthwhile part of me? Without warning, Tara throws her arms around me and pulls me close. I wrap my arms around her waist without even thinking. You're not a shell, Morgan. You're the furthest thing from that. Just because someone tried to make you something other than yourself, or because someone people took advantage of you, that can't destroy the real you, that you has always been there. And I know it's a lot better than you might think. She nuzzles her neck, and I can feel the dampness in her cheeks. She's crying. You've got passion, you've got personality, you've got conviction, you've got so much awesome stuff in you that I couldn't name it all if you gave me a whole week. All of that is the real you. That is not Tara's voice, I'm losing it, I just want to end this, but 
I got myself into the middle of the situation. <laughs> and that's the girl I'm in love with. The girl I, ca I, want, I want to be with, no matter what. And I want to put a name on it, so you know that will never change. God, Tara, my... I'm gonna blow out my nose if you need me. We pull apart and she wipes the tears from her eyes. I don't really know a non-cheesy way to put it, so will you be my girlfriend? If you're okay with everything I've done, with everything I still have to do, then how could I say no? Tara instantly lets out a long wheeze and clutches her hand to her chest. Is she okay? <laughs> She's just getting the- oh! <laughs> It's like that is- <laughs> It's like the meme of that old man who's having- Who's getting cardiac arrest. You good? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Just give me a minute. I feel like my body's trying to overcome being allergic to commitment right now. <laughs> I awkwardly pat her on the shoulder. It's obvious that neither of us have an, any idea what you're supposed to do in a situation like this. Tara grabs me by the waist, gently leads us over to the bed. I press my forehead against her and for once allow myself to be comforted. Don't you dare. She strokes my head. Slime, slime time slows to a standstill. We kiss. This could be our last night together, but in a way, it's our first night together too, and I'm going to make the most of it. Oh, just, just black out. I'm gonna end there. I'm gonna end there. Look, if there, if <laughs> I assume there, ha there should be a scene between Tara and Morgan, you know, just because they're the other freaking romantic romantic couple in this freaking game but yeah i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna end this part here maybe i i, I said like in the in, in the previous previous video saying that like oh maybe we're getting to the end and i'm gonna record all of this but we're literally we literally got into chapter five like in the last hour in in, in the last last hour because i'm been recording this for two hours now which is great I said I was going to stop, but I just pressed record immediately after I stopped recording. <laughs> All right, that was uh, part 13 of Heart of the Woods. We have a touching reunion between uh, Tara and uh, uh, Tara and Maddie. And we also find out that Morgan and Abigail are family. <laughs> what a twist. So... We, we, we have, we have that and, and, you know, they just had a really nice, fun time. We also found out that, you know, not surprisingly, Galadora is the freaking uh, fairy queen and Evelyn is the runaway fairy. So in my previous, previous recording of part uh, 10 and 11, I, I, I was wondering who Galadora was, whether it was the, f where, whether it was the fairy queen or whether it was the runaway fairy, but... I spoiled myself because on the Steam page of Heart of the Woods, they have a little announcement saying that they are, uh, they have voice actors now. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I clicked on it and unbeknownst to me, the freaking cast revealed, <laughs> revealed the, the, the freaking fairy queen. So I was like, oh, so the fairy queen is a fucking character. And, and so that means that Galatera has to be the fairy queen. I spoiled it for myself. Oh, well. Anyways, I have to say that the, uh, the the second scene with Abigail and, uh, and and Maddie, that scene was short and sweet, but I really liked it. That was uh, that was one scene that I'm I'm more I'm more or less just really amazed by. Not <laughs> just uh, just I just really liked it in terms of the writing. I also liked the CG shot as well. That was like that that's a really good shot. And again, you know, go buy the game or. Search it up on the internet or something. I don't, you didn't. You didn't hear me say anything about that. Yeah, that scene was really good. I really, I really enjoyed that scene. I was hoping we weren't gonna get a back the back scene, but maybe we won't. But I I'll never know until I freaking record the next part. The, the the gang's all here. We've got. We we found out who the fairy queen is, and the and uh, Galadera is like, oh, how funny that you would try to, or you know, stupid that you would try to break this curse when the f the moon's not even full yet. So, and, and since, uh, Evelyn, like, she gets, she's the most powerful when the moon is here. Does that work the same for Maddie as well? Consider that, c consider that the fairies had told Maddie that they were gonna come back once the moon is full. So, I, I just assume once the moon's full, like, all the fairies are just really powerful. 
<laughs> maybe Maddie, Ma maybe Evelyn's more powerful since she's been around for so long. Well, I mean, the other fairies have been around for so long. Well, whatever. Whatever. The full moon's coming. Shit's gonna get tear up. And, uh, and we'll, 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 we'll find out what happens in the next part. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next video.